Hello, great people. Welcome back to our channel. We are so excited to have you again. The northern parts of Nigeria can no longer endure what is happening around them, especially in the area of victimization by some group of persons who most of the time are described as abductors. Sometimes they are described as bandits and, and other times we hear people talking about them as, the, you know, Amfulani headsmen. Now, some few days ago, I could still remember Emiya of uh, Taraba State, one of the Emiyas, had to give them an ultimatum, talking about the Amfulani headsmen. They gave them an ultimatum that they must quit their land before 30 days. I don't know what his plan is, but it's a pointer to the fact that the people are tired of hosting them because whenever they are around an environment, if they don't bring degradation to your agricultural activities, then they will start getting involved in all manner of activity which is inimical to their host communities. And uh, right now, different social political groups in the northern part of Nigeria have joined hands together to send a strong message to the president and also to the federal government in respect to these people called bandits, arms headsmen, and also um, kidnappers. They said they should be given a name. And that's what we're going to be looking at in a jiffy. But before we do that, if you're not subscribed, kindly hit on the red subscribe button and also the bell icon so that you can get a notification anytime we publish. The persistent and continuous mayhem carried out by arm hitsmen, bandits, and kidnapper of Nigerians, with a new twist being the shooting down of a Nigerian Air Force fighter jet, have led some northern groups to call on President Muhammad Buhari to declare the perpetrators as terrorists. Nigeria has been witnessing unrelenting attack on communities, schools, and individuals, leading to the kidnapping and killing of thousands of Nigerians with Zamfar and Kaduna in the northwest zone and Niger and Benue states in the north central being the most badly affected in addition to the destruction of properties and farmlands. This is a side the counter-terrorism war being fought in the northeast against Boko Haram and Iswap terrorists by the security agencies. In the crisis turned southern part of Kaduna state is a political group, the Southern Kaduna People's Union. So Kapu urged the federal government to immediately declare bandits, armed headsmen, and abductors as terrorists following their devastating activities of killing and destroying properties across the country. The union's president, Jonathan Asake, who made this call at a press conference in Kaduna, said activities of bandits had taken a more worrisome state with the destruction of farmland. We call on the federal government to immediately declare these armed Fulani headsmen, abductors, bandits, or whatever name the parade as terrorists. Sukapu said they seem to be a recurring visual cycle of violence meted out on their communities that always coincide with the commencement of the rainy season, which had often culminated in massive destruction of lives and property, including displacement of thousands of people. The reunion recalled that last year, 2020, when the rainy season commenced in May, there were massive onslaught of genocidal proportions across southern Kaduna communities, particularly in Chikong, Kajuru, Kacha, Kaura, Karu, Sanga, Jemia, and Zango Katif local government areas. These are all left in India. Trial, death, destruction, and displacement with a huge humanitarian crisis. Again, this year, with the commencement of another rainy season, the onslaught have resumed, which coincide with the period when our farming communities need to be on their farms. With particular reference, are the recent attack on communities in Zangong Kutav local government area, where no fewer than a hundred people have been massacred within seven days, 12 village, villages completely decimated, and over 90% of Ayyab land des deserted by inhabitants over fear of uncertainty. It is sadly unbelievable that 10 days after these massacre and displacement in our communities from all observable indices, there appear to be a conspiracy of silence or a deliberate attempt by the government to downplay the severity 
of the atrocities and genocides being perpetrated by these attackers across our communities. In conclusion, whoever comes to our community, either as individuals or group, to kill, maim, destroy, and displace our people and take over our homeland, no matter how long it takes, every square inch of our land will be recovered by our generation or future generation. Another Northern Group, the Coalition of Northern Group, CNG, through its spokesperson, Abdulaziz Suleiman, concord that those who terrorize people should be probably designated. According to him, he said, as far as the CNG, and I think any decent organization should be concerned, even without saying it, bandits and kidnappers are terrorists, unless the label means anything else, but they are terrorist outfit. But if labeling them officially as terrorists would change the situation, it should be welcome. And I don't think even the kidnappers and bandits see themselves as anything but terrorists. We place so much emphasis on name tag and not the essence of the issue. But whatever name it is called, they are all acts of criminality that must not be condoned by the society. The Middle Belt Forum, MBA, has also called on Buhari's administration to declare key killer headsmen, bandits, and kidnappers as terrorists. According to MBA, the headsmen pressure group, Meiti Allah, should also be proscribed because its leaders has owned up to killings in several states in the region. Speaking to leadership last night, the president of the Middle Belt Forum, Dr. Beatrice Pogu, said the government must stop the grandstanding and declare the killer headsmen terrorists, adding that the activities have brought hardship to the people of the region in addition to impending hunger ahead since farmers can no longer go to their farm for fear of being attacked. There is a double standard where you proscribe indigenous people of Biafra as a terrorist group but leave out killer headsmen, bandits and kidnapper. The agitation for Biafra is as a result of what the people describe as injustice. If the country is working well, who will think about separating? The headsmen, bandits, and kidnappers have been carrying out their activities unchecked. They kill, take advantage of women, call it ransom. At the same time, they have not been proscribed. Even when their leader, Meitiala, said they do that because their cattle are rustled, no one has arrested them. No one has been invited for questioning. The call by our ethnic group for killer headsmen, bandits, and kidnappers to be declared terrorist is in order. What we are saying is that the government should not just declare the killer headsmen, bandits, and kidnapper terrorists, but the government should go a step further to investigate leaders of Meiti Allah who are backing these groups, Pogo said. According to the Middle Bell Forum president, the government must stop its double standard and address the issue, adding that if communities begin to mobilize themselves against the, heads, the killers, things might become worse. A killer is a killer, whether a headsman or whatever name he or she is called. If the government does not declare these killer headsmen, bandit and kidnapper terrorists, and stem the activities, communities will begin to mobilize themselves. He lamented that the this stress call are not being responded to in timely fashion to rescue communities under the attack of bandit. If an attack is taking place, residents will call the security agencies. No one will show up until after the damage has been done. The bandits, the killer has been and the abductors have been carrying out the activity, activities unchecked. No one has declared them terrorists. There is trouble ahead because from all indications, the bubbles will bust if everyone in every community move against this killer. Everyone will be in it. Since the responsibility of government is to ensure peace and security, the government must rise up and declare these people terrorists. The activities must be checked. They also, in another development, Arewa Consultative Forum, through its National Publicity Secretary, Emmanuel, Yahweh said bandits and kidnapper activities are terrorists in nature, but because they are not coordinated as a group and amphibious in nature, it will be difficult for government to classify them as terrorists like the Boko Haram and independent indigenous people of Biafra. They are criminal ter terrorizing people, but the problem of calling them a terrorist group is because they are not organized. They are just scattered around. 
Organized groups like Boko Haram and IPOP can be branded terrorists, but when a group is not coordinated and carry out sporadic attacks, it becomes very difficult for government to call them terrorists. What the bandits are doing is criminal, but they are all scattered everywhere, but their acts are terrorist acts. Meanwhile, it is a cultural group of all Fulanese in Nigeria, the military headquarters, who has said that the group has no relationship with killer headsman bandit and kidnapper. Mate Allah said it should not be linked to such criminal group, adding that it does not complain whenever such people are being killed. Wow. 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 I think it's high time the government respond because if they continue to keep quiet, um, the people may likely take um, laws into their hands. And that will not be suitable enough. We'd like to leave it there.